able to share some of those presentations, um, you will actually regard them as being uh, very good and, and, and rewarding. One of the things that we've been talking about consistently, um, you heard it yesterday morning, certainly heard it again this morning, is about some of the key requirements which constitute um, a thriving, successful uh, city. Uh, it's around certainly where the city centre is concerned, how we actually deliver a uh, high quality hotel or indeed high quality hotels, how we continue uh, to drive um, grade A office uh, development within the city centre and also uh, how we actually uh, start to create new markets, particularly where high value housing uh, is concerned. And that is as important as creating affordable housing or housing for key workers, uh, which of course many of our residents in Manchester rightly require. Over the last um, three or four years, we've been working very, very closely with Gary and his team, including Ryan, who's here today as well, um, in addressing uh, what we mean by a vibrant uh, regeneration framework for the Bootle Street uh, area. Two, three years ago, we published a strategic re regeneration framework. For those of you familiar with the way we do things in Manchester, we're very, very open about what we see about our ambitions for the city. And we also try to make those critical linkages between those ambitions and how we wish to see particular parts of the city uh, develop. And within that strategic regeneration framework, we were absolutely clear about what we demanded in terms of a user uh, profile. Since then, there has been um, a lot of debate, a lot of discussion, uh, and developments of proposals, um, which has resulted in uh, a recent planning permission, application, not permission, application. <laughs> That's next week. No. <laughs> <laughs> But fundamentally, what uh, we wanted to do today particularly was share with you the methodology which has characterised the development uh, of these proposals. A methodology which addresses functionality, particularly in relation to the civic spaces of Manchester and Deansgate, the way in which we drive amenity provision uh, accessible to Manchester residents, and also how we actually balance those requirements with an absolute commitment to heritage and conservation. Delighted to welcome Gary Neville, uh, who's actually going to take you through his ideas and proposals. Gary. Thank you for the clap. Um, St Michael's. Um, I was talking to uh, Giggsy on the plane on the way over last night and I said that this development game feels a little bit like playing away at Liverpool every week at the moment. Um, it's tough. We've been through a long, hard road on this project, 12 years, for those of you who aren't aware. And we're passionate about this scheme like you wouldn't believe. And in terms of the sort of key drivers from our point of view, I think a lot of you in the room are aware of the location of the site. We've talked relentlessly about the responsibility that we carry knowing that we have a 1.5 acre site within 100 metres of the Town Hall Square and the importance of the location and what we need to do. We can't hide, we're not going to hide, the intent of this scheme from day one is driven by ourselves, not by investors, not by agents, not by anybody else other than the fact that through our own experiences of travelling around the world with Manchester United being very fortunate to go to world-class cities with world-class hotels, world-class residential um, developments that we thought that Manchester needed to deliver a world-class residential development linked to a hotel. And that was the intent from day one, to deliver a market-shifting scheme, a market-shifting product one that had service driven right the way through it and high levels of quality of service. And we were never going to, if you like, solve Manchester's affordable housing or any city's affordable housing problem in one site. And we certainly weren't going to on this. We felt this needed to be a premium scheme. In terms of, um, in terms of the site, it always makes me giggle a little bit, this slide, in that 
we should have got a few more traffic wardens and bins uh, on the streets to make them look slightly worse. Um, but these streets do suffer. They do suffer. They're not streets that you would choose to walk down to cut across the city. They do need developing. I don't think anybody in the room argues that there isn't development required within this site. There are. There is no economic, great economic benefits for the city or for the treasury. There is no great employment. There are four people currently employed. And the buildings, to be fair, two of them have been designed to exclude the police station and the synagogue. So from our point of view, obviously, it's ripe for redevelopment. And I don't think anybody debates that point. In terms of hitting the opportunity and the tensions head on, I don't think we've ever probably fully explained, and there's no doubt that we are struggling to get our message across in certain ways in respect of our thinking and methodology. There obviously was the strategic um, regeneration framework, framework which talked about the uses of commercial, residential and hotel. And we add public space to that as being the fourth real key wish list for our, of, our, of ourselves. And the blue is the existing buildings. And then you see merging through, and we poured over this for weeks and months in respect of a hybrid approach of keeping certain aspects of the buildings and merging new with it. And what we, can, what we kept ending up with were bulky, heavy schemes, and it didn't meet the what would be principles and values that we set ourselves on this site, which was to create a world-class development that could stand out in our city. There is no doubt that we haven't pleased everybody, that we, over the last six months, 12 months in particular, in consultation with bodies like Historic England have tried wherever possible to listen, to, to develop. We've made many, many changes um, during the actual pre-application process. And I think that ultimately today, I wanted to say that we have currently asked Manchester City Council to not determine the application. We are going to make further refinements to the project. We have to get this right. We understand the responsibility that we carry with this scheme and that we have to walk around our own city for 20, 30 years beyond this development being finished, but it has to be absolutely fantastic. That doesn't mean to say we're going to change the key principles around scale and height. We believe that tall buildings, and going to the next slide, we believe that old and new, tall and small, can live side by side. We believe that in a city that aspires and is, in aspects, you know, fantastic, and aspires to be a global city that sets new standards, not just in the UK, but internationally, that actually you can live side by side, old and new, that actually they can marry together. And we genuinely believe in that. We're never going to be able to convince people who don't believe in the fact that, you know, if you like, old buildings should remain as a museum in certain areas. We believe that ultimately the best of new and the best of old can be achieved. And that's what we firmly believe on St. Michael's. I want to talk a little bit about the uses. This is not a marketing presentation. At this point in the application, at this point in the proceedings of St. Michael's, it's far too serious for us to come at you with fancy design presentations and marketing presentations around how good the apartments are going to be or how lovely the hotel room looks or what the view of Albert Square or Spinning Fields looks like from the 21st or 23rd floor. It's about putting across serious um, issues that we believe and also trying to make you understand the belief that we have in what we're doing is right. We wanted to deliver, obviously, the strategic regeneration framework. We're totally in sync with it. We want a mixed-use development. We want and have to deliver a brand-new synagogue. We have a reformed synagogue that currently can't deliver the services that it wants to in its current property, and they are desperate, as we are, to get a redevelopment. But picking up specifically on the four key aspects... Sorry, I've not moved on there on the four key aspects. When we talk about residential and we sit down with our fund advisors, you sit down with your agents and you get advice, you sit down with your development team and you talk about obviously marrying, you want product. Product has to be at the very heart of what we're delivering here. Product has always forced the design in this respect. And when I, thought, I think about the residences, we always had it in our mind that we wanted to align a five-star international branded hotel with our, residential, with our residential apartments. We are on the brink with two internationally renowned hotel operators to brand the residences, to attach world-class housekeeping, room service, concierge, spa, business lounge facilities to these apartments and create what would be a different level 
of service quality to residential units, which is what we believed in, what inspired us initially to get involved in this scheme and deliver something special. In terms of the offices, everyone thinks we're a little bit mad in our team. We were told 15,000 square foot, 20,000 square foot floor plates. They'll create the pre-lets. We, we'll we should do it in phases. That's what the market wants. That's what the market should deliver. I'm sorry, unfortunately, we get clunky, heavy buildings that don't sit on this site. We're going to deliver 21 floors of 7,000 square foot floor plates. There's probably going to be 15 to 20 multi-let schemes, probably the hardest way in which to actually do offices. And there are people in this room who know more, a lot more about office development than I do. But what I would say is that our office agents, to be fair, have been shut down in terms of their advice. We've gone for what we believe to be a bespoke premium offer that is different and actually is, if you like, meets the product intent that we wanted to. In terms of five-star hotel, Manchester has one, one five-star hotel. That is not good enough. It's not right. And the reason, I suppose, is twofold. The costs that a five-star international brand levy on you in terms of um, build specifications, in terms of costs into the P&L, are heavy. And it means that you have to drive your average daily rate up from 150 to 155, which is what the, the market is currently delivering, to 185 to 200 pounds a night. We, and our investors more importantly, and we are investors in this scheme, believe that the market can get there. We believe in Manchester. We believe that we can deliver these room rates. We believe we can deliver this level of product. We believe that we need to shift the market in the hotel industry. And to have only one five-star hotel in the city and none have been built for the last 10 to 15 years is something that we need to change on this site. And that comes at a cost to ourselves. And we have to, if you like, beat the market, which is something that ultimately investors don't tend to like doing. So you've asked your investors to believe in 7,000 square foot floor plates. You've asked them to believe in a hotel um, rate that doesn't exist in the market. You've asked them to apply costs to the residential that take it to probably the highest value residential scheme that will exist in Manchester in terms of what it has to achieve. And then you tell your investors that you basically want to give 50% of the actual land away to public space because it's important that we bring the community in with us connectivity of the streets from Deansgate through to Albert Square is absolutely critical. We have to achieve that. I think that we can improve what we've done already, and that is one of some of the refinements that we are going to make. In terms of Bootle Street, we have failed miserably on that side. We need to change what we're doing on Bootle Street, and that is something that we are doing as a team over this next few weeks in terms of activating South Mill Street and Bootle Street more than we currently have done because one of the drivers of this site, there's no good point me pointing towards underused streets, which I did do in the earlier slides, and then all of a sudden in six years, seven years' time, hopefully we can deliver this project and still seeing underused streets, so we will change. But they are what we believe to be world-class spaces. The lower square, these steps, which we believe are fantastic, and also the upper square, which we want to be 365 days a year usable, which is difficult in Manchester, and that's why we've put a cover on top. The other benefits, sorry, the other benefits, there is no employment currently on the site. There will be 1,500 new jobs. There will be tens of millions of pounds going to the Treasury. This is not PR spin. I don't tend to do PR spin well. For those of you who have witnessed St. Michael's PR over the last six months, you'll understand that. Uh, <laughs> obviously, jobs in construction. And from our point of view, we don't brag about this. This is just a result of this development and what it's actually going to achieve. And lastly, I think from our point of view, we accept that we are new developers, we are young developers, but we are absolutely passionate and intent on delivering this project. We are also persistent and believe in what we're actually doing. I think we talk about the Northern Powerhouse, we talk about foreign investors having the sentiment of the city at heart. Our, for, our foreign investors, Rousley, BCGI, Chinese and Singaporean, are having to believe in numbers that don't, not, that don't exist in the market at this current time. They're having to do more than believe in the city. They're having to believe in the growth of the city over the next three or four years, in unstable times where there is some, obviously, political um, lack of stability. Obviously, in terms of, you know, the, the, the call that I've received most over the last six months has been, obviously, regarding to Brexit and those types of conversations there, you have to settle down. Our Singaporean and Chinese partners, 
but they're fully committed. They are ready to go. They've never moved throughout all the ups and downs that we've had in this last 12 to 18 months. And what we've done today, because I don't believe we have got our message across in terms of the intent of the scheme of what it's there to achieve. And that's difficult because there's been an unprecedented level of noise. But we have brought over, we have built a virtual reality of the city and it's at the back over in the far left corner. There are a, a set of goggles where you can walk around our city, your city, my city and see what it with St Michael's at the heart of it and to see whether you really are, you do feel it's a fantastic addition to the city in terms of what it will achieve. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.